shout out to my recent subscribers. I really appreciate you guys' support. Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the previous video, we performed a basic installation of Cuckoo, which is our sandbox environment that we can uh, safely run malware within. Uh, and so if we jump to one of our reports here, we'll see on our, if we go to our network analysis tab, We'll see a bunch of different tabs that we can select uh, depending on the protocol that was in use. You'll also see off to the right that we have a Sericata tag. And if I, and if I select this, uh, as you can see, we have no Sericata alerts or Sericata is not able to extract any TLS uh, certificate details. Uh, and that's because Sericata is not configured yet. So in this video, I wanna show you guys how we can configure Sericata and this will allow us to detect malicious network traffic that is leaving our sandbox environment or entering our sandbox environment. So this will be able to detect if any reach outs to command and control servers are done. So Sericata comes with a, a ton of rules that is really helpful in analyzing malicious network traffic. So stick around and we'll jump into it. And all right, so first things first, we actually need to install Sericata. So I'll open up a new terminal here and throw this off to the side. Uh, and here I'm on Sericata's docs, uh, 6.0.3. I will link to this in the description of this video if you want to follow along. Uh, and then I'll jump to the installing the binary version, uh, the binary package of Sericata. And again, I am on an Ubuntu box. so. I will just follow these three commands here to add their repo and uh, update and then install Sericata. And all right, so we got that added. Let's go ahead and run an update. And then we will go ahead and install Sericata. And again, I'm installing this on the host server that is running Cuckoo. This is not being installed within our uh, ISO image that we that we use to spin up a VM when we want to analyze malware. So make sure you're doing it on your host system. And okay, that looks good. So if we run a quick command just to verify that it's installed correctly, uh, Sericata dash capital V, we see uh, that we can load that we can run Sericata, that Sericata has been installed and is on version 6.0.3. And so if we navigate into Sericata's directory under uh, etc Sericata and ls this out, we'll see the Sericata.yaml, which is Sericata's config file that it uses. Uh, fair warning, this is not the like dedicated Sericata video that I plan to do, uh, I'm still, finalizing on getting my lab set up to best replicate something that is a value to you guys. So this is not uh, that video. This is only just installing Sericata within on our host that is running Cuckoo so that during the malware analysis, we can run Sericata against the PCAP file that is generated via the TCP dump. Uh, so that's that was important to install that prereq uh, in the previous video that we did. So if we open up the sericata.yaml, there's not really anything we need to change here. We can just leave it at the default, so that is fine. Uh, but there is a, uh, if you are deploying sericata within a uh, environment where sericata is actually in line and is analyzing network traffic that is going in and out of the network, then uh, this is a file that is used to customize your Sericata to best fit your environment. So there are a ton of options here. Again, this is not the video where we'll do a deep dive into Sericata, so, but uh, we will soon, so stay tuned for that. And all right, so that looks good. And so now we need to update the rules. As of now, we don't have any rules. Uh, Sericata as part of the binary install comes bundled with the Sericata update, uh, which is really just kind of a Python script uh, that the Sericata team has put together to easily manage your rules and uh, rule reload. So if we run this Sericata update command, then, 
Oh, actually, we get a permission denied because I am not sudo. So let me run sudo Suricata update. And here, Suricata is reaching out to uh, emerging threats. They are a open source, uh, pretty popular collection of rules that Suricata uh, grabs to inspect traffic against. Uh, so, so this is a popular one. There are some commercial uh, vendors out there, like Proofpoint is a good one, to where they're generating rules every day off of what they see out in the wild. Um, and so there are some commercial rules that you can purchase, but this is a pretty good free one that is available and is kept up to date uh, every day. And now let me open up the Suricata update docs because we will need to change some permissions here so that our open secure user that is running Cuckoo will be able to access the Suricata directory and rules that it will need to uh, to run Suricata and then be able to evaluate the network traffic against the rules that we have created. Uh, and here you can see also that Suricata writes the rules out to one big rules file. So if we actually open this guy up, we'll see all of the Suricata uh, rules here, right? And so there's a ton of them. <laughs> but you can see all those here. Uh, again, I'm not going to deep dive too much into how we can edit and configure roles. That'll be for future videos. So I'm going to create this group called Suricata, and then I will tie the directories and files within this to the Suricata group so that my open secure user will be able to, well, and ultimately Cuckoo will be able to access these directories. And so now let's try to just run Suricata update not as sudo, but just as our user. Um, and okay, we still get a permission denied. So let's actually change the ownership to be my open secure user. So I'll do a sudo chown r to make it recursive. And I'll say open secure and then I'll point to the Suricata group that we just created and say var lib Suricata. All right, and let's try the Suricata update again. And good, we don't have an ear, so that looks good. So let's make sure real quick, let's just do a quick check that our open secure user that will be running Cuckoo uh, will be able to access this. And yeah, we see ownership, okay. However, I'm not sure why Suricata rules is as my open secure group. Uh, that should be fine, but if we do run into Cuckoo into an error uh, when running Cuckoo, I'll make sure and check that as the first thing. And so, all right, so we have Suricata installed. We don't have to start Suricata as a service. Uh, Cuckoo will actually point to the binaries of Suricata and and start it as its post processing. So. I'll go back into uh, my three terminals here and I'll just kill everything. Uh, so I'll kill the Cuckoo router, I'll kill the web UI, and I'll kill Cuckoo itself. So we will need to make a change. So if we uh, open up within our Cuckoo conf, uh, and again, I am within my virtual environment uh, that is running Cuckoo. So make sure you are, uh, you're also in your virtual environment that you're using to run Cuckoo. And then I'm gonna open up this processing.conf and if we just do a quick search for Suricata, we'll see uh, we'll see the Suricata tag here. We'll see that enabled is set to no, so we'll change that to yes. And then we don't need to make any tweaks here, uh, so we're pointing to the Suricata binary, so you can make sure that is correct by just doing a I could just say which Suricata, and here we can see that the binary is in user bin Suricata, so that's good. Our configuration file, again, is within the Etsy Suricata directory and is the Suricata.yaml file, so that looks good. Suricata outputs to an eve.json file, um, and so we're telling Cuckoo that, hey, you're going to, this is the log file that you're going to look into to see alerts from. 
and then these file logs and file JSON, uh, we won't, we, we don't need to worry about. We're Sericata can extract files that are also going across the network. Uh, it can be kind of resource intensive though, so I, I don't recommend. Um, and Cuckoo is also grabbing files as well. So we'd be kind of be duplicating the same the same effort. So we'll see an error on this uh, just because Sericata isn't configured by default to extract files, uh, but, it, but it's fine. Cuckoo will still be able to run. So really the only change we need to make is to change the enabled flag from no to yes. And we will save that off. And now let's go ahead and start Cuckoo. So let me, first things first, uh, I always like to start the router because Cuckoo will gripe at you. So the, the kind of the order of operations I like to do is I start up the router and then I start up Cuckoo itself. And then just to, to double check, you'll see output here within your router terminal. Um, and we can see that it's loaded VirtualBox, it's loaded one machine, so that all looks good. And then I start up my web UI uh, last. And now if we jump back into this guy, let's see if we can run an analysis and see and verify that Sericata is working uh, how we expect it to. So I'll just, to a URL of, I'll just say youtube.com. That looks good. We'll say the internet route, that all looks good. All right, and then I'll jump back into the terminal that we started Cuckoo within to see the output. And here we'll see, so the order in how this works is Cuckoo will spin up the VM, it'll do its analysis, and then part of it's post-processing. So we'll see that the VM will actually be torn down. And as part of the post-processing is during the during the VM, during the analysis process, so when the VM is still active, Cuckoo runs TCP dump to capture the network traffic that is being generated at that time and writes it to a PCAP file. And Sericata has the ability to analyze PCAP files. So after the VM does its analysis and the VM is torn down, we'll see the processing tasks start and that's where Sericata comes into play. So it'll then feed the PCAP file to Sericata. Sericata will evaluate it against its rule set and then return that back to Cuckoo and then we'll be able to see that within the web UI. So uh, if all goes well, we should see that here in a sec. And all right, so here we can see Sericata start to take over and here we can see that it grabs the PCAP file. So it's reading our one PCAP file. It has a total of just over a thousand packets uh, with a little over 600,000 bytes. Um, so that looks good. So now if we jump into our report, that is the output that I expected to see. Uh, if we jump into our report and let's go to our network analysis. And if we select our Sericata tag, here we can see good. Um, so there are no Sericata alerts detected. Um, that is expected, I guess. I just did a analysis on youtube.com. Um, but here we can see Sericata is stripping out all of the metadata within the certs, um, which is really nice. So Sericata also has rule sets to, you know, one, one, one attack vector that attackers like to take advantage of is encrypting their traffic via HTTPS. Uh, but in order to do so, you need a certificate. And with Sericata being able to strip out the details in terms of the issue of the cert, the subject of the cert, and the fingerprint of the cert. They use a uh, JA3 hash, I believe is what it's called. Um, but they're able to then detect, okay, is this a legitimate cert uh, that has been provided by a trusted CA and is something like a google.com? Or is this a certificate or does this match a certificate that we know is malicious? Um, so even though the, the traffic itself is encrypted and it's hard for us to decrypt and actually see what's going on, we know that the traffic encrypted within this, net, uh, within this session is malicious because it is flagging on a malicious cert. Right, and, and Sericata will be able to, to tell us that. 
So let's see if we can, so Sir kind of looks to be running good. Uh, let's see if we can generate some alerts. So I'll go back into my dashboard. Uh, let me submit this file that I grabbed that should be malware. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Uh, I'll just select internet and I would expect to see, I think it's like a adware related, I think is what it was. Uh, I just used the friendly dasmalwork.eu. Uh, this guy hosts a lot of malware samples out that you can grab to test against your uh, security tools, which is nice. But a uh, word of caution, of course, always make sure you're doing this in a kind of an isolated uh, environment, just so you don't run the risk of the malware kind of going rogue on you and uh, in impacting uh, whatever environment you're currently in. Uh, so let's go back to this and this should be running. Uh, we're getting an output here. You don't have N2 crypt. I don't believe that's true. We, sh we, we do have it. So I'm not sure why. I could be running low on resources on this box though and it's freaking out on me, but that should be fine. All right, so let's go into this guy. Um, and let's go into network analysis and let's see if we have any Suricata alerts. So here we see a DNS query for a .cc top level domain. So that, that doesn't happen very often. So if we go into our DNS uh, records here, here we see, sure enough, a query was made for this api.baizu.cc. Uh, so that's interesting, right? It's, that's something that, uh, and here we can see the tools all kind of working harmoniously together, right? So Suricata is alerting on, hey, we saw a DNS query for a .cc top level domain uh, that matched one of these Suricata rules that we have within our Suricata.rules file that we installed. And if we go to our DNS analysis here, we see, sure enough, we do see a DNS query for that uh, particular domain. And so yeah, so I think uh, I think we'll kind of wrap up with that. I just wanted to quickly introduce you guys uh, to be able to enable Suricata. It's actually pretty straightforward once you uh, install Suricata, and then there's a few group and ownership permissions that you need to change. Uh, but for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward process, and now gives us the ability to also ingest to have Suricata analyze our network traffic and be able to kind of pinpoint you know, really within, to be able to pinpoint alerts within, you know, our other tags up here, right? So now we can see instead of maybe if we're manually looking over this, you know, we may miss the query out to this domain uh, that is that is a little odd, right? And not as expected where if we just quickly go to the Suricata tag, we are alerted on that uh, immediately. And we know, okay, we see a suspicious DNS query. Let's go ahead and pop over there and see what it is. And then we can do our further analysis on top of that. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, I think in the next video, we, I'll tackle the Cuckoo uh, API that we can also get running and make our requests to, to, to help automate our malware analysis process. So, so look forward to that and I will see you in the next one.